Bodybuilders are mentally ill. No, I'm not joking, I'm being deadly serious. This is a statement I've made before, which offended some lazy ass, soft ass bodybuilders. But why though? Well, it's because the lies don't hurt, the truth does. If someone told me I look stupid because I have blue hair, I wouldn't care, cause it's a lie. My message that bodybuilders are mentally ill is offensive because it's the truth. You can call me rude, but you can't call me wrong. I'd say it's a statement that defines my channel. If you look at the comments of people who have problems with my message and my content, people never critique what I said unless they're stupid. They critique how I said it, which is fair, right? You can say that. I do deliver my message a certain way, which will invoke a negative reaction. If I have to be labeled as the most toxic fitness influencer to truly make fitness great again and make fitness about being fit again, then so be it. I'm okay with that. What truly makes bodybuilders mentally ill all comes from insecurity. It causes bodybuilders to approach fitness out of ego. And if you act out of ego, you're a loser. Which is also why I say bodybuilders are losers. And again, as harsh as it sounds, it's the truth. When I refer to bodybuilding, I'm not talking about athletic bodybuilding or trying to build muscle to look aesthetic and attractive to be healthy. In my last video, I went into depth on this particular subject. I'm talking about the pursuit of getting as big as possible and solely that. It doesn't matter if you do recreational or competitive bodybuilding, the desire to get as big as possible is only ego driven. The only reason it makes sense to get as big as possible on the outside is when you feel super small on the inside. So getting absolutely massive gives you some type of security. Explained by the prevalence of steroids in the bodybuilding community for people who don't even compete. In this case, I'm gonna be a bodybuilder's therapist and the first thing I must tell them is how stupid what you're doing is. Getting bigger to feel comfortable in your own skin would be good and great if it genuinely wasn't ruining your mind. Fitness is now full of gym cells who make the gym their entire life. It actually reminds me of the hardcore gamers like I was before I found the right kind of fitness, aka athletic bodybuilding, where all I could think about was gaming, they can only think about lifting weights in the gym and they make it their whole personality. Fitness and going to the gym is just about creating opportunities to do more things and get better at the things that matter to you. When you're addicted to video games, your mind and low key your life are geared toward improving at that game. But once you've sunk months, maybe years at that game and have reached the pinnacle, what do you have to show for it? All you ultimately did was work hard and achieve something that from an overall life view means nothing. That's bodybuilding. You're building muscle and honestly fake strength for nothing. Bodybuilding worsens your health, performance and aesthetics, which also means it's worsening your life. It sounds dramatic, but it really isn't. It worsens your health as adding muscle with little to no performance benefits is going to reduce your stability, balance, and functional strength, which will lead to higher injury risk. Bodybuilding worsens your performance because when you train with a priority of muscles over movements, the strength you gain doesn't transfer well. And it worsens your aesthetics and attractiveness as the research and surveys, which I show quite often, show bodybuilders are quite unattractive. And if you're a bodybuilder who wants to neglect these surveys and research, just go look at your own personal life experience. And once you get over your coat fest, you'll realize that the bodybuilding physique isn't attractive to women. Y'all like bodybuilders? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bodybuilders? Yeah. I like skinny, scrawny guys. How about multimillionaires? <laughs> How about eight inches and thick? Oh, yes. How about talented? How about loving and respectful? My testimony, I'm nothing but pure, and I ask you if you want to be in the YouTube channel. And you like scrawny guys. I know he trauma dump on us like that. Damn. I look at fitness more than just at surface level. It's not just about your ego and your feeling of security, although that does matter to at least some degree. It's about making your life better. I owe everything I have in my life, even my YouTube channel, to fitness. I also owe my self-confidence, my health now and in the future, all the experiences and opportunities I've had, and my multiple girlfriends. When I was a skinny 18 year old skinny fat kid, I approached my insecurities head on by approaching fitness the right way. If I try to hide from my insecurities through bodybuilding, it's scary to think of the loser I'd be. Losers hide from anything tough. That's why bodybuilders don't do any kind of martial art. For those of you who actually do MMA, when was the last time you saw a bodybuilder in there? Pretty much never. Yet bodybuilders always talk about, oh, if it was in a street fight, I whoop your ass. The conversation of street fights is so childish, it's unbelievable. I'm talking to you in the camera. Have you ever been in a street fight? Probably not. And if you did, did you regret it? Probably. Did you prove something? 
You probably didn't. Street fights, like bodybuilding, is just ego. Imagine someone getting your head that bad that you need to go and fight them on the street when you don't even know the guy. All right, I went off on a tangent on why I hate the conversation of street fights because it's so childish. But back to MMA, I go to MMA three times a week. You think I like going? No, I don't. I can just chill at my house, maybe play some FIFA or something. But no, I go to a gym to get hit in the face. So why do I go? I go because quite honestly, I'm not a pussy. MMA is a way you approach fear, anxiety, discomfort, and yes, insecurity head on. I go to MMA multiple times a week because of its mental benefits. Weightlifting or athletic bodybuilding is my way of improving my physical health. Well, MMA is my way of improving my mental health because you cannot be mentally healthy if you're not mentally tough. With MMA, nothing is more intimidating than getting started, which is why most people never do. I'd say most people find going to the gym and weightlifting for the first time very intimidating, but imagine MMA. And that's why I would say that like 90% of guys don't do any kind of martial art. Yet these are the same guys who talk about beating someone's ass and getting in a street fight in an argument, which is embarrassing and weak. My message to bodybuilders and I guess my subscribers too, is that if you're not doing MMA to get the mental toughness you need and the bodybuilders crave so much, then at least do the hard exercise in the gym, right? Even lazy bodybuilder Dr. Marlin agrees with this statement. Any reason for doing that as opposed to a chest supported or a seal? Manhood. Yeah, <laughs> manhood shit, like an orangutan would do. You don't okay. see him leaning on a fucking tree branch. For these super rare occasions when I do use a machine or a seated exercise, which I want to clarify is super rare, I'll finish up my set and put my timer on and make sure I'm resting long enough. But after like five or 10 seconds of rest, I'm like, I could go now if I wanted to. This is just so easy. So just go on my phone and look at some stupid stuff until however long I need to rest, and then I'll just jump back into my next set. Well, on the flip side, after I've done a heavy deadlift, I'm literally sitting down after my set contemplating life. And the timer's going down, and I wish I had even longer to rest. That's the difference. That's the goddamn difference. Bodybuilders will cope and say that machines and seated exercises are better for muscle growth. Although we're having mounting evidence that this isn't true, but even if it is, that muscle growth is very minimal. But bodybuilders won't do the barbell squat, aka the free weights, because again, they avoid anything that's tough. They are so soft, in fact, they will rest in the recommended strength rest times, which is two to five minutes, for an isolation exercise like a leg extension. Yeah, a leg extension. And when bodybuilders do the man exercises, like Dr. Marlin said, they use ton of equipment to make the exercise easier when they're not lifting anywhere near their one rep max. Or they'll use it on something like a bench press where you're not even loading the spine. Training like an aesthetic, healthy athlete in the gym isn't really about testing your physical toughness, although it's obviously a part. It's about testing your mental toughness. And that's all bodybuilders have ever wanted and all they ever want, mental toughness and they avoid approaching this insecurity head on, resulting in their lazy ass training, which is gonna cause long-term health issues in the future. Steroids aside as well. This stupid bodybuilder tore his Achilles playing soccer. Playing soccer and bodybuilding, not it bro. Literally every week I'm getting an injury, like. Two hours later. Yeah, we're in the hospital. Uh -huh. Kind of tore my Achilles playing soccer. This just shows that training like a bodybuilder is freaking stupid. Not only do bodybuilders blast gear, which definitely doesn't help with injury prevention, but they get unnecessarily big, which is bad for their joints, and do stupid exercises like this, so they have no idea how to move or stabilize themselves. When you train like a bodybuilder, you aren't training your stabilizer muscles, your coordination, or your balance. So yes, even if you're a mini bodybuilder and not that massive, your injury risk is increasing and fast. Old school fitness influencers used to be so much better. Yet with the growth of the cancer that is TikTok, anyone can become fitness famous, which is why we now have Alan Ubelt who does bicep curls with the belt on. Before becoming fake famous was a thing, we had credible fitness influencers like Athlean X. He isn't a massive bodybuilder and is actually qualified to talk about fitness, which kind of reminds me of someone. He gets a ton of hate now, one of the reasons being that he used fake weights, which I guess is fair, but most of the hate he gets is because he's not a bodybuilder, meaning uneducated bodybuilders who think they know a lot about fitness will critique his advice because it's not optimal for building muscle. And to reiterate a point, these are bodybuilders with zero education and have taken steroids, the bodybuilders that dominate the fitness industry. And the most trending bodybuilder right now is Sam Sulek, who had one of these stupidest monologues recently. Being big is a flex because you're literally walking around with the results that you had to earn and they can't it can't just be given to you 
you can't just be given years of hard workouts, right? It's not like driving a fancy car or wearing fancy clothes or having an expensive watch. Like that, things, you know, things like that can be given. Whereas, you know, if you get a big set of biceps, no matter how you got them, it took you at least a fucking while. Taking steroids is the definition of given, not earned, which creates mental problems alluding to the title of this video. Like Alan Ubelt or Alex Ubank. I already know I'm gonna hear, oh Mario, you're jealous because he's natural. You don't have the testosterone levels of a castrated male as a natural, nor do you have this nasty of a case of body dysmorphia. I can't speak for everyone here, but as a natural lifter, I've never had body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia isn't the case of wanting a better physique because that would apply to all of us. Even at my leanest, best looking, most aesthetic physique, I wanted more. Body dysmorphia is when your mind deludes you into believing you look way worse than you actually do. Alex Eubank is thirsted by meatheads in the bodybuilding industry, while I thirst over something like this, but we clearly have different preferences, which there's nothing wrong with that. In spite of all the praise he gets, he's on record saying things like, I'm not lean enough, or I'm not big enough. This only happens when you didn't earn something. Take my best friend, Leon Edwards, for example. He worked endlessly for one goal, which is to be the best fighter in the world, the UFC champion. After 13 years, when he finally became that, he received the gold belt and you could clearly see it meant so much to him. Even time after the event, he left his belt on his dining table at home so he could see it every day. But if you received the same belt, would you feel the same way? No, because you didn't earn it. Instead of the representation of hard work and being the best in the world like it is to Leon, to you and me, it's simply just a piece of metal. Any steroid transformation causes body dysmorphia for this reason. When you take steroids, you instantly become an immoral fitness influencer who doesn't know anything about fitness and shouldn't tell people how to train. That's why a majority of fitness influencers don't actually coach and educate their audience, but produce what I call gym sale content that goes viral. The, I'll give you $100 if you beat me at any lift of your choice, or asking bodybuilders stupid ass questions in the gym, explaining why these bodybuilders don't actually coach as a business which makes no sense because you're a fitness influencer. But instead they sell their underdosed, under-researched supplements and their shit clothes. Bodybuilders are mentally ill because they train in the gym in a manner that worsens your health, looks, performance, and overall your entire life. When you do fitness the right way, which is athletic bodybuilding, that's when you improve all those things. Fitness is a tool for becoming better, not comforting and flexing your ego. In my last video, I go over why athletic bodybuilding can change your life because fitness is much more than just building muscle.